Well, my name's Ross. This is my 1974 Dodge Coronet Pursuit. <laughs> this is one of, we believe, only five left in the U.S. Wow. Now, the story behind this car, it was originally purchased as a K-Code police optioned and manufactured car at the Lynch Road assembly line, which is on Lynch Road in Detroit, Michigan. That plant was in operation for many decades, and most of the uh, big B-body cars, the big uh, famous Chryslers, the Chargers, and, and some of the Belvedere's and other models were made at that plant along with this car. Uh, Chrysler only built a few thousand police package option vehicles per year, and this was one that was made in 1974. Now, this car was sold to the um, city of Tucson, county of Pima, Sheriff's Department in Arizona, put into service in 1974 as a big city detectives unit, uh, which is why you see it in its original unmarked livery. It was ordered in factory dark metallic silver, which is an unusual color for a police car anyway. Um, but then it was also kept entirely unmarked, other than the uh, unique red spotlight, a couple rear deck lights. Police cars of the 70s, especially unmarked, didn't have a lot of bells and whistles on them because legally they weren't required. Uh, but at the time, this was a, a unique um, uh, service vehicle. So the uh, big city burglary, homicide, you know, detectives units, they would take this car out to the crime scenes, do their investigations. And one of the reasons we know this is because it was ordered with small block V8. And while most police vehicles of the era were armed with bigger, big block 400 or 440 cubic inch pursuit engines, this one had a more modest 360 cubic inch four barrel engine. 1974 was the first year that Chrysler offered the 360 as a police engine, and the 360 would eventually carry the torch for the entire Chrysler Police Division until 1981, when the 360 was also uh, discontinued as the largest option police engine available. Uh, but at the time, it was the fuel-saving alternative, shall we say. And I found some archival information from the County Board of Supervisors in 1974 in Tucson that basically explained how unless the car was being used for freeway duty or traffic enforcement, the sheriff had to purchase a small block V8. They were allowed to buy the biggest small block V8 they could buy, but it had to be a small block because the fuel crisis that happened in the U.S. in 1973 really scared a lot of uh, administrators who were budget conscious about where are we going to get our fuel supplies. So, by dropping from a 440 big block to a 360 small block in what is essentially a mid-sized car, Chrysler could essentially advertise 50% better fuel economy. Now, this was a time when, especially police vehicles, when you talk about fuel economy, we're talking about the difference between 10 miles per gallon or 15 miles per gallon. Yeah. So that is a difference of fuel savings of 50%. Wow. But when we're talking about such small numbers because of the technology involved, mm -hmm. it's a little bit laughable here in the, in the 2020s. Yeah. Uh, but for the time, this was some forward thinking by bean counting bureaucrats who were concerned about, well, how are we going to reduce fuel prices or fuel expenditures, but also how are we going to keep modest performance out of our police cars because police officers, even uh, high, higher ranking investigators, they need to get to their scenes quickly. So they need to be able to respond. They need the cars with the performance, with the power to get through traffic. So one of the compromises that was reached was, okay, we'll still buy V8s, but we'll buy the smallest big V8 we can get our hands on. Mm -hmm. So that's how this car was laid out. So and how did you uh, come across this car? I found this car um, during the height shall we say, of the COVID shutdowns. My bank account was flush with newly printed Biden bucks and I was in the market for a new police car project because I have six of these in my collection uh, that I've acquired over 20 years of collecting, first oh. through my time in law enforcement and then just through general be and because of my uh, commitment to public safety events like this, doing uh, charitable uh, charity events and car shows. Um, I like having cars that are unique. I like cars with a history. I like cars um, that have unique performance options and police vehicles basically will check all three boxes. They're unique, they have an interesting history, I mean if these cars could talk, let's be honest, and most importantly, all the cool RT performance race optioned uh, uh, performance equipment that your uh, uh, performance cars were ordered with came right down the checklist for the police package cars.